Lord, give us leave. The Prince of Wales and I must have some private conference. No. I know not whether God will have it so for some displeasing service I have done, that in his secret doom, out of my blood, he'll breed revengement and a scourge for me to punish my mistreadings. Tell me else, could such inordinate and low desires, such poor, such bare, such lewd, such mean attempts, such barren pleasures, rude society, as thou art mashed with all and grafted to accompany the greatness of thy blood? Hold their level with thy princely heart. So please, your majesty. Thy place in council thou hast rudely lost, which by thy younger brother is supplied, and art almost an alien to the hearts of all the court and princes of my blood. The hope of thy time is ruined, and the soul of every man prophetically doth forethink thy fall. Had I so lavish in my presence been so stale and cheap to vulgar company, opinion that it helped me to the crown had left me in reputeless banishment, a fellow of no mark nor likelihood. By being seldom seen, I could not stir, but like a comet, I was wondered at that men would tell their children, this is he. And then I stole all courtesy from heaven, dressed myself in such humility that I did pluck allegiance from men's hearts, loud shouts and salutations from their mouths. The skipping king, he ambled up and down with shallow jesters and rash bavin wits, mingled his royalty with capering fools, and fiefed himself to popularity. So when he had occasion to be seen, he was but as the cuckoo is in June. Heard, not regarded. And in that very line, Harry, standest thou. For thou hast lost thy princely privilege with vile communication. Not an eye, but is a weary of thy common sight. Save mine, which hath desired to see thee more, and which now doth that I would not have it to make blind itself with foolish tenderness. I shall hereafter, my thrice gracious lord, be more myself. <laughs> For all the world, as thou art to this hour, was Richard then, when I from France set foot at Ravenspur. And even as I was then, is Percy now. He hath more worthy interest to the state than thou, the shadow of succession. For of no right nor colour like to right, he doth fill fields with harness in the realm. And being no more in debt to yours than thou, leads ancient lords and reverend bishops on to bloody battles and to bruising arms. Thrice hath this hot spur, Mars in swaddling clothes, this infant warrior, in his enterprises discomforted great Douglas, tain him once, enlarged him made a friend of him, to fill the mouth of deep defiance up and shake the peace and safety of our crown. Wherefore do I tell these news to thee? Hmm? Why, Harry, do I tell thee of my foes, which art my nearest and dearest enemy? Thou that art like enough through vassal fear, base inclination, and the start of spleen to fight against me under Percy's pay. Do not think so. You shall not find it so. I will redeem all this on Percy's head, and in the closing of some glorious day, be bold to tell you that I am your son. And that shall be the day, whene'er it lights, that this same child of honor and renown this gallant Hotspur, this all-praised knight, 
and your unthought of Harry chance to meet. Then will I make this northern youth exchange his glorious deeds for my indignities. This in the name of God, I promise here. And I will die a hundred thousand deaths ere break the smallest parcel of this vow. A hundred thousand rebels die in this. I shall have charge. 